Hey YouTube, Scott here from RV Travelling Husbands. Our last vlog revealed that we're searching for a replacement for Harvey, our Windsor Dane tree. So I suppose we should just dig in. Everything's on the table to start with and I'll show you where we're starting from. So stick around. You would think that it might be a natural progression to move on up to the next model. And we hear you asking, what about Windsor? Both the Flinders and the Simpson are bigger and they both measure 7.8 metres in length, but at $205,000 and $215,000 respectively, Apollo has priced them out of our reach. The same goes for the Winnebago. And from our recent quick spin, you would remember that what worked well in the Daintree does not necessarily transfer well to the larger models with the huge expansions of white looking rather clinical and not feeling that they're worth the entry price of $204,000. So we've crossed them off our list. You might remember that when we started our search last time, one of the front runners was the Sunliner Pinto 412. It had the same floor plan design as the Daintree that we come to love, and it was on a VW Crafter chassis. With our hesitations on staying with front wheel drive, we're open to change, and our thought process was to take a look and see what was available on an all wheel drive chassis. We started by returning to the Sunliner website, and the VW Synchro chassis seemed to have disappeared from the available options. With the implied current issues with obtaining components and chassis delays, it seemed plausible and realistic. So we resumed our internet search and we found the Jayco All-Terrain MS-22-2. And we also found that VW had just launched the new Crafter camper van, also built by Jayco. Now Horizon and Tracker also do 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter based vans, but these both start above $210,000. And then there's also compact motorhomes built off 4x4 utes like the popular Hilux and Ranger from companies like Sun Camper and Explorer. But by default, they're roughly as wide and as long as the donor vehicle and with pricing also north of $215,000, they don't really achieve what we're trying to do here. So we have to be realistic and we definitely have to set our price range here. So taking into account our sale price for Harvey and using our visits to recent caravan shows as a guide, we've seen that we can achieve a larger motorhome for roughly the same price as a brand new Daintree. So that's where we're aiming for. Something with more space, more storage, and that's not too long or too heavy. We're not looking at obtaining a light rigid license here and we need to still be able to park it behind our gates at home for the price or less than the price of $185,000. So we wondered, could we move over to van life? So we started to explore these Jayco built options. You realize that these are obviously custom built out vans that do come with a few obstacles. First, there'd be the width as a purpose-built habitat is usually wider than the donor vehicle or the donor chassis and how that translates into the space, one of our concerns, and secondly, the storage availability. But with the market being so hot right now, the all-terrain VW Crafter camper van at $151,490 was only on sale for a brief period before it was exhausted its allocation and it was put on an indefinite pause. So this meant we took ourselves off to go and look at the $169,000 Jayco Terrain MS-22-2. It sits nice and high and looks imposing. It has nice touches like the electric sliding door, but after having a good look around and sizing it up, we decided that camper vans or whiz bangs aren't for us. For us, they're narrow with little floor space, having a compromised bed and dinette and a combination wet toilet, there's not enough floor space for puppies to sleep, let alone if they were wet or dirty. Plus then there's that huge sliding door for the dogs to escape out of. So that's bye bye van life. So it looks like we're sticking with a bespoke habitat built off a cab chassis platform. At least we know what we want, right? 
we really want to stick around with that dry ensuite, meaning that the toilet is separated from the shower. And once we find a suitable habitat that we like, we will then see what, if any, range of donor chassis are on offer. At the Melbourne show, we inquired with several makers and the VW Crafter Synchro chassis is still available from some manufacturers on certain models, but it will now add 20 grand and an extra six months of waiting time to any motorhome. So it looks like we're left with front wheel drive choices like the Fiat Ducato or rear wheel drive choices coming from Mercedes, Iveco, LDV or Ford. Starting with Evita, they do have the larger bird's fill at 7.4 metres long. It's on the front wheel drive Fiat Ducato chassis. It does have the preferred dry bathroom in the rear and it has both the bed and the dinette on a slide out. But at 201 or 206,000 with the high Luton, it's above our set cutoff. So that leaves us with, in alphabetical order, a van, the Ovation M3. The Avan has lots of choice, starting with the low profile Luton B class or the high sleeping Luton of the C class. They then offer up to eight different floor plans on both. The M3 and the M4 are at seven meters long with the remaining models all longer. The M4 has a rear east west bed, which means more climbing over each other and so an, and a side on suite. So we've decided to concentrate on the C class M3. The M3 is bigger than the Daintree, but it's the shortest on offer here in this group at 6.96 meters. It has a starting price of 159,140. It has a smaller dry on suite, a huge storage under the bed with a split level floor, a sleeping Luton, six seater dinette, heaps of niches and cupboards, an L shaped kitchen with, a, uh, with an oven, ambient LED lighting, LED ceiling lights and reading lights, and two LPG bottles but the main bed has this weird shape and it has a love it or loathe it wood laminate. Then there is the new Ovation M 2.9. Sadly, we were told the M3 is no longer a standard model, but it could be had on special order. And the M 2.9 has been introduced to fill the gap. It's the same length and the same price, but it has a similar layout with a huge storage area under the bed, but the habitat access door moves forward and it removes that two seat lounge, allowing the kitchen to have a longer straight bench on the passenger side and the fridge and the pantry shift on over to the driver's side. Jayco's range of conquests covers a variety of models with extra equipment of optimum upgrades as well. Going bigger than our Dane Tree means that there's two models in the 24 foot range, both identically priced at 164,990. The Jayco FA24-4 and the MS24-4. There's also a Optimum MS24-4 and it's priced 20 grand dearer at 184,990. It does add Sirocco fans, a dishwasher, wine grad, 4G Wi-Fi, induction cooktop, satellite dish, an auto leveling to name a few things. The FA is on the front wheel drive Fiat Ducato chassis and the MS is on the rear wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter chassis. They both measure 7.55 meters and they have identical floor plans. There is a large club lounge at the rear with the electrically lowering bed above, a sleeping Luton with a dry on sweep on the side. Standout inclusions are a diesel heater, generator space, an electric awning, instant hot water, two LPG bottles and 125 litre water tank. Then we have the Jayco 25 foot range and it spans 179,990 through to 183,500. It's only available on the Fiat Ducato chassis and that's the FA251, 252 and 253. These numbers denote three different floor plans. They're all eight meters in length and they all have that rear dry ensuite with a side slide of either the bed or the bed and the dinette. They come complete with a washing machine, instant hot water, electric step and awning, generator space, two LPG bottles and 125 litres water tank. Both of these Jayco's have the 70s style wood grain laminate but they do offer a fair bit of customisation. And lastly we come to the Sunliner switch range. When it comes to Sunliner, 
we see that they have eight different floor plans in the Switch catalogue. They range from 7.1 metres to 8.6 metres in length, with five different drivetrain chassis available and an optional garage extension for extra storage on most of those, with the added option of a high sleeping Luton for, for all of these as an extra option. There is an S441. It has a rear club lounge and the electrically lowering bed, just like a Jayco 244. So we've decided to compare the S442, as it has the same rear dry ensuite as the Dane Tree. It's 7.1 metres long and affords more space by having the bed on a slide out. It has a rather spacious ensuite with lots of niches and space for a washing machine. It does have a smaller kitchen, but added space comes with a flip top counter. It has a smaller four seat dinette, but plenty of nooks and crannies and little touches like included reading lights, curtains in the Luton, substantial manual rollout awning, and modern cabinetry finishes we've come to love like in our Dane Tree. These three manufacturers produce four models that offer up to eight different variations with five different drivetrains availability that fall within our price limit and our desire to obtain more space. And we want to keep that rear dry ensuite. So keeping to this criteria, these have become our initial options. So what do you think? Let us know your thoughts and what would be your decision? I'm heading off now. I'm going to put together an ambitious spreadsheet so Wayne and I can get down to whittling this list. Watch out for our next video and see what those outcomes are. And don't forget to click like and subscribe and please leave some comments below. We'd love to get back to you. But for now, we'll see you next time. Bye.